Hi everyone, this is Jonathan from Wild Cockatiel Games, Unity Game Programming for Beginners, and in this video, we are going to take a look at how to make your coding 90% more efficient, if not all the way up to even 100%. Now, this video is aimed towards beginners, however, it's what we're going to be looking at here is effective for intermediate coders and anyone even higher than that if you haven't already been implementing this one simple trick. I know it has certainly helped me a lot. And what is this we're talking about? Well, we're going to be taking a look at how to implement good coding architecture. Now, I realize that doesn't exactly sound like the sexiest subject in coding. However, if you start doing this and you look back at your old code where you haven't been doing this, you're going to be smacking yourself on the forehead and going, oh, you idiot, why were you coding that way when you could have been coding this way? It's so much cleaner, so much more organized, and you're going to find that you're getting less errors. Everything's going to be flowing a lot smoother. It's so worth learning from an early stage. And in this video, I have a few goals for you. Number one, we're going to be taking a look at how a coding architecture looks in the front end of a game. So an example of a scenario that uses coding architecture. Then we're going to be taking a look at the back end of that code. And finally, I'm going to have you make a hamburger. What? What does that have to do with coding? What does that mean? Well, stick around and I promise you will find out it's all going to come together. Okay, so to get started, I want to show you an example first of what we're going to be talking about. Now, this is a game I'm working on called Zombie Barrel Blast, and the concept is you launch a zombie out of barrels from one barrel into the next, and as that happens, uh, more barrels appear, coins appear, enemies appear, obstacles appear until you get to the end of the level. It's fairly straightforward, but let's take a look at what's going on in the background in the scene view. Okay, so I want you to watch here on the left-hand side of the screen what happens as the zombie uh, launches forward through these barrels, and you're going to see that the barrels on the left-hand side get picked up. They disappear when, this, when the uh, screen view disappears, and they magically reappear on the right-hand side of the screen. Now, what's going on in the background is there are scripts that are talking to each other, and there's one script in particular called an object, objects spawner, which is responsible for placing new barrels, new coins, new obstacles in the correct order, and it has a lot to do. Uh, it's a complicated bit of work, but because of the way that I've coded it, I've made it not so complicated. Let's take a look at that back end. Actually, before going into my object spawner script, I just want to take a moment to go over the flow of events with you so you can understand how all of the objects in my game spawn and how coding architecture applies here, as well as showing you how coding architecture helped me with a challenge that I recently had and what could have been a lot more difficult without proper coding architecture in place. So, number one, in my game, I always have to spawn a barrel. That's always a given. That's always going to happen. Once a barrel spawned, I have to determine that barrel's attributes. Does it move? Does it spin? And so forth. Then, choose whether or not an obstacle is going to spawn after that barrel. Now, if one is, then select an obstacle not currently in use, move it into play, and determine its attributes. And then, do the same thing with coins. Now, the challenge that I recently faced was when I realized some of my barrels are stationary and the coins that are appearing before and after a stationary barrel should appear on the same y-axis. That way, when a player is launching into or out of a stationary barrel, they can actually retrieve those coins. Otherwise, it's not very fair to them. And without coding architecture, this would have been a challenging thing to do, figuring out how to position the coins, particularly the, any coins that appear behind a stationary barrel. But with the coding architecture, I realized that I can easily just slip one line of code into my master method and then do all the incremental steps after that. But in terms of figuring out how to place that, it was only changing a couple of lines and it wasn't really a big deal. Now you are looking at my object spawner script. And this method here, public void spawn next sequence, which takes in a game object barrel, 
is the method you were looking at in detail over in Google Slides. And if I'm to enlarge this, expand this method, you can see that it is basically declaring a few variables. And then all it's really doing is it's calling to all the other methods that exist here within my object spawner script. So all the methods here under barrel spawning, obstacle spawning, and coin spawning. Now we don't really need to look at these and what they do, but we can see there's a few of them and they're all handling and doing different things. These are the methods that are actually doing the work and making the game function as a full uh, game. So basically this spawn next sequence script, it's kind of like the office manager, you know, it, it's not going to do any work by itself. It's just going to delegate to all of the underlings that are going to do all the work for it. It's just kind of pointing them in the right order. And you can see right here, reposition last coins. This is that challenge I was talking about that I had for myself where I had to move some uh, coins into the same Y axis as a stationary barrel. So with proper code hierarchy, it's not too difficult to go through here and realize that if any changes do need to be made, it's just a matter of looking at the master method that calls to all of the other methods, figuring out where things need to go, and then uh, going in and making those changes there. And if, for instance, I did need to change the location of reposition last coins, I could just cut that out of here and paste it down here. That's not where I want it, but it would be as simple as doing that rather than having to go into these coin spawning scripts and figure out, okay, well, here's reposition last coins. Uh, where, where do I have all the logic in here? What do I need to do? No, I just have to move the call to that method and uh, it takes care of the rest all by itself. It's now time for you to take a crack at writing your own well-architectured code. And remember that hamburger I was talking about earlier? Well, that's because you're going to write code about making a hamburger. That's right. I want you in a moment to pause the video and you are going to write some sample code about how to make a hamburger. And the way I want you to do this is by using just one master method, like I have my call next sequence. You're just going to have a method called make burger and you're going to write five to seven different sub methods within it. So remember, you're not going to actually be writing code. You're just going to be basically writing the steps to make a hamburger as if you were writing it in code format or perhaps making a video game about making a hamburger. You should have at least one of those sub methods to call to other sub methods. So you're going to write the main method, then you're going to make one sub method and in it call other imaginary sub methods. You're going to write all of your code as comments only. So you don't even have to use Visual Studio or anything for that. You can just open up Notepad if you want and do it in there or Microsoft Word. As long as you're just writing out sample code. And finally, there are multiple ways to do this. So after pausing the video, I'm going to show you how I'm going to tackle this. And if you don't do it in exactly the same way, that's fine. The goal here is to practice writing well-architectured code, not to do it the same way. But pause the video, give it a go, and then we'll come back and I'll show you how I might go about doing this. Pause the video now. Okay, welcome back. Did you do the exercise? I hope so. Now let's go over to Visual Studio and I will run you through my version of making a hamburger in code. Okay, so I am in a script called make hamburger with my method name make burger. And I think the best thing to do here is start off by uh, making a method to determine the burger type. So for instance, uh, is it going to be a veggie or a meat burger? Because you know, there are people who like their veggie burgers too, and we need to determine that. Uh, we also might need to know what type of burger patties we're gonna be using. Are they gonna be store-bought frozen or are they going to be uh, prepared? So what I might do, I'll just do uh, make patties, but then I'm going to put just here as a reminder, actually I'm going to put above and I put it as a reminder, if using fresh uh, ground beef or veggies, what veggies actually make a veggie burger? I have no idea. I eat meat burgers, uh, but that's what we're going to do there. But we might do another if, we, we might like do an if or else statement and say uh, if burgers are store-bought, 
we are going to uh, separate patties because you know if you buy the store-bought meat patties they always stick together and you have to separate them with a knife it's kind of a pain but that is basically what happens uh, so now I think we're going to have to prepare the other ingredients so uh, onion lettuce tomato all that fun stuff uh, prepare we'll call the method prepare ingredients it's not really ingredients but I'm not sure what else to call it the idea is just to kind of do this quickly and now we're going to do our sub method here and we're going to actually type this one out so prepare ingredients and because this method has now been created I'm going to uncomment this because it's not going to give an error and we're going to code in some sub methods here and we're going to say uh, prepare tomatoes tomatoes prepare onions and uh, prepare lettuce you get the picture we're just this is a sub method so we want it to call to all do all of these things and then you know if we need to change uh, where we're making the tomatoes and the onions and the lettuce we don't have to cut all these other methods and all the other code for it we can just swap this and say oh we're gonna actually make the uh, prepare the ingredients before we make the patties and put that over there it's really really easy to change and then we're going to say uh, we need to prepare the condiments so our ketchup, lettuce, relish, and I could actually do another method here, prepare condiments and do kind of the same thing, uh, the sub methods within. And then we could say cook patties. And you notice I'm calling them patties all the way through because they might be, I could say cook the meat or cook meat, but they might be veggies. So cook patties is just more general and it works for all of them. And we're also saying not barbecue patties because uh, it could be barbecue but it could also be done in an oven or on a frying pan, particularly if it's a winter storm and you want to have burgers and you're not going to go outside to put them on a barbecue in that case. You're just going to do them in the oven. And then I might say serve burgers and say, oh shoot, actually we need to assemble them first. So before that, we're going to go up a couple lines and write assemble burgers where we're going to put all of those ingredients together now i might do some other things here later so for instance uh determine burger type this might actually end up being you know bool burger type equals determine burger type and then turn this into a method that's going to return a bool and depending on the burger type we're going to have some additional methods in here but this is the beautiful thing about writing uh, code in a very architectured format that if we need to make any major changes it's going to be really really easy down the line to just go and do that from the highest level and work our way down to more and more specific levels as we go through the code so i hope that really makes sense thank you so much for watching this video i hope you have learned a thing or two about code architecture i hope you have found this helpful please do share your burger recipes in the comments below and uh, I look forward to seeing you in another video. Thanks again.